Right, well, we've got a dirty engine bay and a cup of tea. So let's have a bit of a talk about this and discuss the direction we're going to take. I'm not doing anything if this engine is pretty well toast. So there's a couple of tests I want to do. My brother has a lovely Warren and Brown radiator pressure tester, so I want to have a look at that Welsh plug just to make sure. I've cleaned around it as best I can reach for now. We've got this business here, this, we've got the heat riser, which is all foul. Cable ties holding the high tension leak. These things have a plastic tree. You can see that one's broken. They should plug into the rocker cover. I might have some from my old Sigma, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a heater pipe, a steel one that runs underneath the exhaust manifold. Gotta check all that out. We gotta do this, we know about the radiator support. Battery tray has some corrosion and two welds that have lifted off. So I'll drill out the other ones and do some welding repairs on that. This is all dependent on the engine for that for now. The other thing that screams is this yellow finish on the rod cover. Now that tells me that this car was retailed or traded in the 1980s and retailed again. A lot of yards used to use an enamel clear coat and they would just paint over everything. It would give the hoses a nice shiny appearance the engine would be cleaned down first and then everything's just sprayed. You can see it up here. Um, and it was the way details used to do it. And what used to happen is eventually, well in a very short time I should say, you would start cracking on the hose. You would see that it uh, had a yellow appearance and they would crack. Same as all over here. So that all, I want to get rid of all that. Uh, for now, it's Saturday. The auto shops are closed at the moment. So I think probably the best thing to do, I'm going to go to my brother's too and he's working, so I think what we'll do first is we might give him a compression test and just see what we've got in the way of compression. Uh, if that's good, uh, we'll pressure test, well we'll pressure test anyway, check that Welsh plug out, I think then we'll take all this off, the intake and everything, um, and give it a good clean up and start making it look like a healthy little engine again. As with any old car it's been messed with, you can see the oil pressure sender isn't registering on the dash. I don't know why, but that's knackered. So we need to look at that. You know, we mentioned things on that cable tie, which is wrong. It's just dirty and worn out. We've got a good radiator though, by the look of it. It's been replaced. Here's, whoops, here's our battery clamp which has come off from there and it's got some rust over there which we can fix, it's quite easy. We've got a relay here, I'm not sure what that relay's for. But it wasn't there when the car was new, maybe it's a starter relay. We've got tape on wiring down there, we've got, down and we can see down there, there's grey duct tape on a heater hose. And we've just got generally a whole mess. That looks like... Divorce papers are in the boot of the car. Oh, I'm getting divorced apparently because I bought a They're car. In the glove box. They're in the glove box. I'm sorry, Susie. She's quite cross with me because I car rocked up yesterday and I didn't say anything about it, which was really wrong of me. And she came out and she just said, "Really?" Which I don't kind of blame her. That looks like a Ford connector. It's nice, no, isn't it? It's nice, no. <laughs> you can see some of the back lines here. Have electrical tape. And there's one off that diaphragm down there which is missing. So I need to go through this all, but first we need to ascertain that it's worth doing. The other thing that isn't only for, and this thing's got a huge oil leak in the back, we've just got to make sure we have a cracked rock cover here. I've just seen that. I'm just going to take this off first. I'll take it off from here, it's easier. So I'm going to need a rock cover for it. And I can salvage a lot of these parts and make them look a bit fresher and nicer. Oops. Check this out. There. Focusing. See that? That's a crack because someone's over tightened that. Uh, a weak spot with these. So, our valve cover's rooted. Let's have a look in here, eh? Oh, kicking things. Let's 
see if it's being neglected. It's not as bad as I thought, but it is what it is. These things block on N13 pulsars. You can see how grungy and horrible that is, so we need to look at that. And that looks pretty crusty and horrible in there too. Is that going to lift off? Yes, it is. There we go. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this crap. What the hell is that? God. What's that, a portable chair? Uh, right. I don't know how you put this car together. Give that the ass. Okay, everything to be expected. We've got vacuum lines which are rigid. We've got vacuum lines that are split. Turn this on. There's a heater hose down yonder, which is completely oil soaked. It would be a mistake to put this together without replacing stuff like that. We've got Celastic that's pouring out of somewhere. Celastic has no place on this. Um, there are better sealers around. Fuel filter down there looks dreadful, and generally the engine bay condition might clean up a bit. Um, I'll try. Uh, the vehicle has a Bosch electronic ignition, or well, it might be a Denso, I'm not sure, but it's got an electronic ignition there. Um, what's that up there? A ballast resistor. The high beam relays out as well, then it's down. Uh, what's the throttle like? That's not too bad. The choke. I'm in the of the opinion. While this thing has this little Makuni carby on it, Makuni are good, a good carburetor. But it's as I said before, the wax pellet choke is crap. So um, I'd be inclined to back the choke off or use a manual choke on it. It's just going to be safer and better, and I'm not going to suck fuel or blow black smoke. That's a better view of the crack on the valve cover. That is knackered. So I need another one of those. If anyone has one and wants to sell it to me, please let me know. Well, I think we'll do a compression test now. Not surprising that every plug I take out of this is as black as the Ace of Spades because it's been running so rich. A lot of that is probably because the cars have been on the road um, since July last year. That's when the registration was cancelled on it. You can see they're all pretty much the same as that. They're completely sorted. The thing is, it isn't missing, and at the moment we're on zero dollar budget. So we're going back in <laughs> until I work out. I know the body's worth it on this car, but I'm not going to spend a dime on the engine until I really know. All right, well I've disconnected the dizzy. I've got a screwdriver holding the choke open. And number one is giving us Christ, 210 pounds. That's a lot. More. Hang on. 20, 30. 215 psi. I've got 220. have 220 again so those compressions are freaking awesome there's only five pound difference between number one and the other three so whoever thought this was a crap engine this one seems to be reasonably healthy you just got to check that block that coolant leak and I tell you what I'm absolutely stoked with that this tester is fickle this is very very old this tester sometimes it reads low and sometimes it reads high but whatever the case it's going to be accurate between its um, variation between cylinders so I am absolutely stoked with them. There are two lights that aren't working on the dash, one's the oil pressure and the oil pressure light and the other's the high beam. It's got tape and all sorts of crap on it. I'm just going to take that off, well like that, take that tape off and I'm just going to run this straight to earth just to check the light and this will tell me if it's the sender or it's the flow. Let's stick it on there and see if we've got anything there that resembles an oil light. Yes, we do. So the sender's knackered. 
It's up to put one of those. I might have one of them somewhere actually. I'm not sure. Have a look. In fact, it could be the terminal that was on there. So I'm just going to just jump that on and sort of grind into that a bit to get a, a bit better connection and see if that works. And that doesn't, so it's not earthing through there. That's cool. We'll put a, another sender on. It's also worth mentioning, this is unfiltered oil. So if you do run a turbocharger, you've got to have a separate oil filter. Right, so my poor mum had a nasty fall at her house in Park Orchards and we had to sell it. She's in a home now. And had to clean the garage out. And casting an eye over this star, there's things like this. Um, 240 Volvo injectors for CIS injection. Uh, 140 Volvo for the pop cap. That's Sigma. There's Sigma window winders. Uh, a Sigma exterior door handle. Falcon power steering lid. Oh, these things. I always keep these. I've got another set now. For punching in bearings. You put the new bearing in and you put this against it and knock it in. A good trick with these is to cut a slot with a 1mm angle grinder blade. And that way when you knock a new one in, you retain the right circumference, but this doesn't get stuck in there. You can just pull it straight out. So let me have a fiddle around in here and see if I can find anything useful. So today we're going to do the window trims on the XC. This tank I want to clear. Um, I've got some of this paint left and I might use it for this really crappy looking air cleaner. Um, the reason is I've got to mix up some two-pack clear, some ISO free. And the quantity, I, this minimum quantity, will do the tank and I'll have some left over. So it'll probably look stupid sitting in here. But if I tidy up the rest of the engine bay, it might look all right. So I think we'll take that off and get it ready. Then, of course, you've got this dilemma where you've got all these old fittings going back onto a freshly painted item. And it might look a bit dodgy. Uh, so do your plate. To plate some of the fasteners in here is probably going to cost 20 bucks. That's nothing. Um, there is some, I have noticed some overspray. There has been some painting done in here before. The grommet for the brake line. And that here on the other side. That's broken away. That can come off. And also the grommet for the wiring line going in there. Someone's retaped that. So it's been fiddled around with. I think I'll just do a bit of it. Just to dolly it up a bit. We'll, um, we'll pull the throttle cable off. Well, that's an 8mm. Um, I want to have a look at the valve cover underneath there. Just to have a bit of a sticky. There we go. Oh, that is ridiculously tight. These things are just two bolts and an O-ring, and you just snug them. You just snug them down. That is ludicrous. That's the reason it cracked. KC and KE lasers used to do the same thing, or Kelly Master three two threes, and see straight away that cracks leveled out. So it was really, really badly distorted. I might be able to weld that at work. That crack from behind. But there'll be a hairline there. But it's, um, I've been on eBay and the only valve covers, you type in valve cover, off cover, anything Astron or Sigma, and you get it five pages of gaskets. Bloody hell, that is filthy. That's really, really dirty. Lots of celastic. I hate celastic on engines. I really, really don't like it. Stupid stuff. Uh, let's have a bit of a sticky in here. I've just got to wipe my fingers because if I touch the cool it is. I think another thing we should probably do is do those valve stem seals. Alright, that looks alright actually. But look at this. It's just got loads and loads of celastic. You don't want to do that. It should just be a light smear with some 3 bond. Um, and pay the 20 bucks for a gasket. It's just a big O-ring. It's pretty, pretty cheap to do. The easiest way and cheapest way of dealing with this is to put, um, is to get a VRS set. And that way we get all the gaskets we need for like 60 bucks. 
but I just wanted to make sure that, that coolant is not going to present too many problems beforehand. So what I think we'll do is we'll need to take the overhead gear off, the rocket gear off. I want to have a look at those um, valve stem seals, but only after we've um, ascertained that the block's okay. These have been really easy to get out. Um, not a bad looking sort of semi header. A bit like a 186S, you know, where you've got your dual engine pipes. Uh, that all looks pretty good in there, though. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. I keep pulling so as to get in chunks like that. This stuff's bad. It's used like that is, is really not good. The less is more with this stuff. You don't want oil pickups or galleries or anything blocking up with this crap. The motorcycle engine, the 350, that I pulled apart, the little four cylinder one, had it on the head gasket. And that will block up your galleries going up to your head for lubrication. And your intention's good, but you'll fry an engine. You know, there's so many better sealers around now that are so superior. One of them is Honda Bond, which is a, a very thin, sort of solvent based uh, sealer. And you just use a really light smear, like a tube will go all over an engine and leave you with, you know, most of the tube left. But this, we don't want this. This isn't good. We'll put a new gasket in. I'll check the bottom of the rocket cover for straightness. Um, if I can find another rocket cover, if anyone's got one lying around, I'd love to buy it from you if it's not cracked. Otherwise, I'll have to weld the one I've got. And hydro blast it too because it's just a grotty mess. So I might just pull a few things out and have a look. The battery clamp and stay and hang on, that's lead. Lead flashing for the battery clamp. That's nice. See the dilemma I've got, can we see it in front yes we can? I've got a dilemma, right? This is a dilemma. If that cool thing's all right, and I'm tipping it is, well, I'm hopeful it is, the wheel's plug. I've got to take this off to get to it. Now, that's easy. I can take the intake off, carburetor, all that sort of stuff. Back the wax pellet off. Um, I've taken a few other bits out. The thing is this, it's a mess. It's got overspray. It's got someone else has wrapped the wiring with the wrong tape. It's like normal electrical tape. It's got aftermarket wiring in it, and it's grotty. Now, I can make this look like new, um, but the rest of it's always going to look crap. What's that chain like? That chain's alright too. No, no, it's not. It's loose. But the surrounding engine bay looks like crap. Uh, we can see how it comes up when it's clean, but here's the deal. It only takes about 40 bucks to paint it. And I just might do it. I wasn't going to do but 40 bucks really, I can mask off around the bell housing, leave the engine in situ, that'll all be off, that'll all be open, so I can get to everything there. I've got to re-weld the battery clamp anyhow. Do you reckon it's worth it? It'll also show me what other stuff's like in here, like behind here. Um, I could take this off and put it back, but I just want to muck around. Remember, this is supposed to be cheap, I've got to keep it cheap because that XC Falcon is costing a fortune. But the XC has value and I don't think it matters. I always stop spending where cars become overcapitalized and these aren't really worth anything. But I don't care. It's only a problem if you're gonna sell it. And I'll probably just drive this around and have a bit of fun with it. But, you know, we can spend about two grand before we start uh, having to worry about overcapitalizing. So quite a lot can be done with two grand. Um, we need four new tyres. I'm not even looking at the brakes, I'm gonna replace them all. The disc rotors are around 70 bucks each. The pads, the linings, maybe factor in some money for the hoses, if it needs be, if it needs it. Needs a rear muffler, did I mention four times? Um, so we do have to be careful to a point. There's the plenum chamber, lovely. Beautiful. Reminds of that crap they spray on. You can see it in the sun. That's the original finish, like a satin. And there's that other crap they stick on. 
And there's some of it there peeling off. That's the worst stuff. See that? Maybe it will clean up. We'll just check it out, eh? This is the same as a Falcon. I haven't even looked at the diagram, but I'm going to tell you, that'll be the neutral start switch, which has got a loop in it because it's manual. And that'll be for your reverse lights there. The XC is exactly the same. So I'll just disconnect him. And that can sit there. Uh, do we want to take the front off? Yes, of course we do. We'll start taking that off too. Because we can. This little ciggy is at a punch in the face. There's tidy yellow around that sticker there. And this is all wrong. So it's been smacking and had a radio to support on it. So that's one of the reasons I just want to pull some stuff up and have a look. And stuff that drops out from underneath, like that thing. It's Japanese, so it's bound to be easy. And there'll be another. In, no, it's missing that one, so it's just held on with the bumper bar. Come on, you silly sausage, get off. There we go. Right, I'll take those out. And this stuff's in good nick. Let's grab that screw. That's in really, really good condition. Look at it. The lenses will come up beautifully, and the silver around the perimeter is good. That's going to clean up a tree. And I won't paint it, I'll just leave it. Those holes there are for the headlight covers that cover the whole thing. Used to see a lot of those in the 80s. You don't see them now, they'd be pretty rare, I'd think. Bugger! There we go, you didn't think we were going to leave it alone, do you? <laughs> I said the wrong thing. We're good. So why am I taking this off? No idea. I just thought I would because I was talking to my son. More tidy yellow. So tidy yellow cars obviously been in a biffo and the parts have been put on this thing. So I might just keep going. Uh, we've got some rust. I wanted to dig off that um, the bottom of that garden, have a look. So I did. And there's some rust there. I'll have to do a little bit of roof there. Um, but it's all pretty good. Look at this. That's a bit messed up. And someone's... Yeah, that's pretty cactus, but we can... We can fix that. That's not going to be hard. It just means... Welding on a whole new bottom on it. Uh, might be easy getting another guard, but that's pretty rooted. That doesn't matter, I knew that'd be like that. Well, let's have a look. Probably have to reseal there. It's pretty solid though. Yeah, it's really good. That's fine. Beautiful. Don't you love when people put bog on thick? Anyway, keep going and try and find more badness. So I've had an awful lot of good, and I'm starting to find bad now, digging a bit deeper. It's all over the joint. It might be easier to make a new piece. Almost might be easier. The problem is if you fill that, every time you open, you know, slam the bonnet, that all shifts. So, this is off a yellow car too. Might have been smacked a few times in the face. I got the camera right against me. Okay, so let's take a close look. We knew this was bad and it looks diabolical. And if I get a screw stick and put it in here, it just turns, nothing happens. Have I got my little guard removing, my trim removing tool? Oh, I can just pull it off like that. Hang on. Just a minute. Oh, that's better. 
nice. And you know what's good about this? It's got foam rubber here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hang on. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Now, if the sill is damaged here, I don't care. We can patch that. It's really, really easy to do. We've got a bog artist here, or a bondo artist. See, and it looks pretty well knackered. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to pop these out and pull the guard off. Let's have a close look, hey? Eh? Whoops, hang on a minute. Is that going to relinquish? Oh God, he's probably glued the bloody thing on. I think he's glued the bottom of the guard on. Hang on a minute, people. <laughs> oh, I love it when people do work like this. Jesus Christ, that's stuffed. Okay, let me get up and have a closer look, hey? Okay, so the guard's sort of off there, but it's stuck in this area here, and there's bits of bog, bondo, poking through. I might have to kind of try and smash that. Because I don't want to bend, I don't want to buckle the guard. Let's get a hammer. Hold on a sec. Right, let me see if I can get it here. I'll put the camera away so I might have to remove it. Uh, well, that's nice. Look at that. Do you like that? There's a big chunk of filler in there that's holding it in place. Let's just break that off. Hey? Oh, foam rubber. Imagine my surprise. Maybe it's got a screw behind here holding it in. Gosh, this is a mess, isn't it? Hang on. That's got, oh, here we go. We've let go. All right, so let's take it off and have a look. Let's get my son out to lunch. Beautiful. And the kicker, more foam rubber. More foam rubber. What is it with this guy in front? He must have worked at Clark Rubber. God damn it, that's hot. Mm, let's have a bit of a closer look. I'm lying on the ground. Okay, we've got a rusty hole there. Easy peasy, I don't care about that. Okay. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll get a wire brush and I'll wire brush this off and we'll have a closer look. And we'll do the same on the other side. But that's a nothing. That's just, that's easy peasy, that stuff. Right, so inside's fine. It's solid. I've just got to put a little patch there. It's all solid everywhere else. Solid up here as well. In here, usual thing, we have seam sealer coming apart. So we need to fill that in. But it's all good. The other side's a little bit more serious. But even then, I just don't care. I'll show you why. You can see this is going to require a bigger patch. So we're going to come up here, along there, and down there. Easy. Not a problem. All clean in here. I can see in there and it's clean. Clean underneath as well. A couple little pinholes there and there. I can probably just tack them. Uh, and I'll use a phosphoric acid on that. And then paint it. Now, all of this is not the fault of the car. The rest of the car's body is great. The fault of this is the fault of the guy that filled it up with foam rubber and all this sort of nonsense. And what's happened is it's got rid of any way of water draining out from the plenum. We've got water coming out from the plenum chamber there, running down the inside of the guard, but it's got nowhere to go. And that's the reason why these sorts of problems happen. If you do the job properly, which is a little bit of extra work, but not too much, then you don't get this sort of nonsense happening. Let's have a look at the guards. A pair of front guards. They look lovely, except the bottom section there. Same with that one. All straight, all looks good. But the real story is what's behind them. But as you can see, still remnants of targy yellow. So this car has had a stove in front. And of course, here's the bottom of the better guard. And the one which is removed. Now, this job in itself is quite complicated. We've got a curve here, a natural curve there. And we've also got the flange at the bottom. And we've got that sort of folded curved area there. So to make that patch, we need a shrinker stretcher. Now, the good thing is that rare spares actually sell bottom parts for GNGH segments for $80 a side. So what that means is I'm going to cut them off refit the guard, refit the bottom, and find exactly where it's supposed to be and weld them up. I know I can get two patches for, 80, for 160 bucks. So seeing that just doesn't worry me. The rest of the guard is absolutely great. 
a little bit of phosphoric here and there and that's just peachy there's nothing wrong with that at all right so this sort of thing is never the answer body dead now loads of filler and foam it reminds me of a um a story i heard years ago i'll move that down um datsun 1200 coupe a guy at a dealership i used to work with had a big hole big rust hole there and the, the story was that he um taped cardboard over it with duct tape filled the inside with chicken wire his sister worked at a bakery so he mixed up a couple of loaves of bread into a poultice and poured it through the chicken wire and once it went hard he took the cardboard off filled over it and painted it and it looked great just this sort of stuff, do you know what I mean? Um, people used to laugh about that thing because it really did look good. But uh, it's funny because this thing is shaping up to be a bit like the XC in that the faults it's got are because people have done silly things with it. There's a good chance this was going to rust anyway. Because as debris, if your car's left outside, as debris comes out of here, it blocks up here and rusts your guards. That's how it works with the Fords as well. Now, I had a Corolla years ago, and I used to unbolt the bottom of the garden, just shake it around like that, and any dust and whatnot would fall out. And it just, just makes sure it's clean in there, and that way it'll never rust, particularly if it's galvanised. So, we've just done our additional exploration. We've taken some door trims off. And we've got a stool up. The only thing down there are uh, bits of bailing channel. Which somebody said in the last video, your bailing channel bits will be in the base of the door. So... They're absolutely mint, these doors, in beautiful condition. Um, nothing wrong with them at all. Just a bit of a clean up and getting that nonsense out. This is the left, uh, sorry, right and rear. Uh, right in front. Same deal, although we've got foam, we've got bailey channel, and we've got a chunk of wood there underneath that side intrusion bar. I don't know what the story with that is. But yeah, this is, oh, this is the one that was missing its channel and it, as it was said it had slid down the guide there so that's all that is but that door is another one that's in really really good condition and the same with the other two on the other side keep these scutching in that keep falling out we've got this arrangement of tissues and paper rather than doing it properly hang on Charlie same with the left hand rear Absolutely perfect. No complaints what's over there. And the left hand front. I was quite impressed with this because I actually found a proper speaker shield. Anyway, same deal. Broken bailey channel. And absolutely nothing wrong with the door. Just bits of basically bailey channel. I don't know if you can see next, the sun is behind me. Can we see? Yes we can. Right, we'll drop that tray out. That needs a good clean. Look at that. It's pretty gross. And let's have a look underneath. Everything normal for a Sigma, I guess. That steering box, can you see it there? The lower seal is pouring. Uh, that steering box, if it's been empty for any length of time, might be knackered. I'm not sure. Uh, but we need to attend to that. Oil leaks all around the front. Is that the sun? Yeah, well, hang on, hang on, come back, where are you going? That's better. So let's clean all that up. Uh, I think most of the oil leaks on this thing are from the top, from that cracked rock cover. And this is all working the way around. It's pretty grimy. You can see there, it's fairly gross, but really, really easy to clean. So that's cool. Um, so far as the front bit's concerned, here's the underside of the bonnet locking bar, and it's been pranged. Um, it looks twisted and pretty shitty, but I don't really know what to do with that. As long as it's level at the top, I don't care, really. Um, that wiring's in the wrong spot. The radiator's a peach on this thing. The radiator support panel, I thought it might have been replaced, but I don't think it has. I think bits of it have been replaced. If you look along here, there's a spot loaded on. But it's just this top bit. I think they've just changed a bit of it. I don't know. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it's a really, really good car. It's a wonderful, wonderful car. Very little wrong with it. Just a couple of bits of welding down there, which we knew about when we bought it. Uh, headlight, because it's a bit milky. That one's a bit milky. 
you, if anyone knows anything about these, if anyone has parts for these, let me know. I need a headlight and a couple of other bits, door handle, that sort of thing for the inside. But yeah, not a hard job. Actually quite a fun one. This looks a bit dodgy. Do we want to mess with that? Of course we do. It's cleaner than that. Just a lot of that stuff there, that's all. I always get spooked when I see stuff like this. You think, uh uh, what are you hiding behind your ugly face? There might be a bit behind there, there might be a bit of brazing. It's been whacked in the front here. That's what that is, that's a join. The other side hasn't got it. It's been smacked in the front. As soon as I saw brazing there, I knew exactly what it was. Do we want to have a look behind here? Which, of course we do, it's a signal. It's mandatory to check for rust in these areas here. Good God, I've never seen one that good. Never in my life have I seen one as clean as that. That's a freak. Bloody hell, that is mint. I can see all fresh paint under there. That's so cool. And if I sacrifice a few clips, I can care less. Right, same deal here. Beautiful. This is the original screen sealer. That stuff there. That's not urethane. And there's a tiny bit of activity there. Can we see? Or is it too bright out here? I'm not sure if it's too bright. Um, that might be well be the original screen or one very like it. There's your two wires. And they're the wires that you heat up or you put a voltage across that bonds the screen. Gosh, how about that? Right, I took this lower rear screen trim off and everything looks good until you get to the centre. We do have some rust there. Uh, I don't know how bad it is. Uh, all looks good right up to the corner. That's all fine. I mean, you can't really tell unless you take the glass and I didn't really want to. I'm going to paint this, but I really wanted to um, take the screen surrounds off, paint it, then put them back on. I see it with the boot lid shut. But that's not that bad either. I'm not going to take the screen out. Um, eventually, probably in a few years, you're you might want to and weld a piece in but still solid you can see it's scaly but really to fix it properly we do have to pop the window out no I mean I probably will but at this stage I don't want to although at the end of the year uh, toward the end of the year this Plymouth's going for trimming at Jason's that'll be gone for a few months maybe it isn't a bad idea to do that take the window out weld up those speaker things and just see how this is I don't know I'll play it by ear. Taking the side moulding off and we're pretty much exactly the same as the front with uh, really good news. So that's really good. That's excellent. Well, what have we got? A couple of surprises. A tiny bit around the bus, the rear screen, a little bit of, tiny bit of surface rust. Around the front screen is beautiful. I'm very, very happy with that. Surprised to find that it still has its original thing there. It's been in a front end collision. We've got this bit here, this cut, is not on the other side, the other side's smooth. So I would think it's been cracked in the front. There's yellow, tiger yellow showing up everywhere, so it's secondhand stuff off a uh, wrecked car. So this side is probably where they stopped. Although that does look like that. I don't know what they've done. Maybe someone, a home guy did this later or something, I'm not sure. But it's straight there on that wheelhouse. But it's been joined there. Having said that, it's superficial. The shock tower looks original, or well, the strut tower. Same on both sides. It looks nice and consistent. This all looks factory down here. And the distance between the rear wheel, the, between the wheel and the house, is the same on both sides. So I couldn't care less about that. I don't think it's a problem at all. Oh, I'll just prick myself. Look at this. That hurt. Um, right, let's just pull that out. That went in quite a way. Um, yes, so very happy indeed still. Just uh, 
Got to continue. I think next time we'll continue cleaning this up and investigate a little bit further with that leak. I think we're going to be all right though. I'm pretty confident. Right, for those into the XC Falcon restoration, here's the boot lid in its naked state. It's not great. Uh, surface rust around where filler was, that sort of stuff. And I couldn't get some of the filler out, strip won't do that. You can see there's badge holes there. Now what they've done is they've pounded the edge of the badge hole in. You can see the hammer marks there. Seam sealer on the back and then just filled over them. Same with the FMRD badges there. So, not the right way to do it, but look, it didn't show through. So now we've got to, uh, I'm waiting on a GXL badge, so I'll know exactly where the holes need to be for that. And we'll weld these up and we'll do it properly. Um, if you're new to the channel and you're into Sigmas, and this is the first time you've seen this, the Sigma is a big job, but it's a bit cookies and cream. There's nothing too difficult about it. Uh, this is your full roast dinner, this car. Everything, down from the engine, down to clips, uh, brand new. Uh, or reconditioned. So, anyway, look, hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you later. Bye. And while I had the paint stripper out, 